Welcome to Canvas. I'm your host Cole Gibbs. We're standing here outside of the bank, formerly known as the Silver Dollar. Now the bank has a very colorful history, which we'll get into later in the show. But first up, here's a segment we like to call the lens. Take a look. On today's show, we're going to be looking at a 23-year-old college student in its natural habitat. Once comfortable in his natural surroundings, this docile creature has no problems resting often and everywhere. Now look as he tries to assimilate different customary styles. This includes the emo, the wankster, no one's gonna mess with him, <laughs> and most popular of all, the bro. He often just enjoys spending time with his herd and chasing the fair sex of his species. He's a natural predator, especially in a t-shirt with no sleeves. And BOOM! Bob's your uncle, he's got a flawless kill. After the hunt, he is a hungry beast and is in need of nourishment in the form of Hot Pockets and Miller High Life. After feasting, he becomes tired again and returns to his perpetual state of slumber. Thanks for tuning in. Up after the break, we're going to sit down with a manager and discuss the bar and restaurant business and the history behind the name. Welcome back to Canvas. I'm sitting here with restaurant manager Ben O'Malley. He's going to tell us why it's called the bank. Uh, the German bank actually derived from uh, it actually being a German bank. When uh, Chuck Stoltz took this over, it used to be the Silver Dollar Cantina. Uh, and before that, it was actually a legitimate German bank for uh, when people came overseas in the 1850s. Uh, the biggest descent, Dubuque population, was of German descent, and they needed a place to bank at. Uh, the Silver Dollar ended up uh, opening up as a Tex-Mex uh, live entertainment venue uh, and when Chuck Stoltz took this over he found that there was a good recipe in that. They said that they wanted to make sure that they are utilizing the live entertainment venue that Dubuque always loved and uh, just embellish on it a little bit. They wanted to add more of a finer dining menu but still catering to the, the working class of Dubuque so that's what we kind of just formulated. a. Uh, hot spot for late night entertainment as well as amazing food and amazing service. The most important vibe that we're trying to cater to is still harnessing uh, the feel of uh, the live entertainment venue here in Dubuque uh, on Main Street. Uh, the Main Street Society and everybody down here has always tried to boost economy by doing as much nightlife as possible uh, and we're happy to be one of the flagships of the live entertainment. We wanted to take over what the silver dollar used to be, uh, embellish on it like I said prior, and kind of just focus on giving Dubuque what they need. There's a lot of competition in Dubuque from uh, finer dining restaurants that we're surrounded by. There's a lot of different bars down here as well, so in order for us to try to make our own niche in the community, we've constantly offered live music that happens from Wednesday through Saturday night. We also wanted to focus on getting as many people in here as possible that enjoy really, really good food, but don't have to pay expensive prices. Dubuque is one that really enjoys going out and really enjoys spending money, but they don't want to do it if you don't have good food or good service. So our overall vibe is just giving everyone a welcoming feel um, and giving everyone a place to go to that they know that they can enjoy themselves and have a good time. We want to thank Ben O'Malley for talking to us again. Um, next up is a piece by Raj and Nick take a look. Kids, teens and adults all come here for art classes. For seven-year-old Isabella, it's a learning and fun experience. We were doing boutique. And she comes here often. Like one or two times a week. The free art classes provided by Dubuque Art Center in downtown Dubuque pulls more than 1,200 people from the community every single year. 
The Dubuque Art Center offers our Creative Community Project, which gives everyone in and around our community an entire course free of charge every single year. And so ages 6 through 106 can come on down and take their free class. And these classes are not just for fine art or painting. They have a wide range of subjects. We offer a lot of great courses, uh, anything from painting and pottery to drawing, guitar. Uh, we even have some digital photography and digital filmmaking classes. The first course is offered free. Then further classes can be taken for $20 to $35 per course that includes all the materials. The cost is only 10 to 20% of the actual cost of the class. The rest of the money comes from the sponsors. Um, the majority of our funding comes from the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs as well as local businesses. Uh, we get funding from banks, from shopping centers, from all sorts of things. The program has been getting a good response from the community. This is also a much acclaimed arts program. And this is actually the largest free community arts education program in the entire state of Iowa. So, if you are an adult but a kid at art, go register and take free classes. For Canvas, this is Raj. I find inspiration all around me, from those that push me to think and to grow, to move forward, because to stand still is to fall behind. That's not my plan, I'm just getting started. My life is just beginning, my major is inspiration. We have all seen art in galleries, but have you ever seen art on the Mississippi River? The art exhibit, which is in its fifth year, has drawn 100 entries from 18 different states and one foreign country. However, this isn't the most interesting fact about the art exhibit. This year's Best of Show Art Sculpture, made by John Anderson Bricker, has a unique and creative look of its own. A series of assemblage sculptures, and what that means is instead of casting or carving, so casting would be like bronze where you're creating an original piece that doesn't exist anymore. His art sculpture, called The Long Toss, is similar to his other art sculptures, but there are some parts of it that are not so similar. This particular piece would be considered to be an installation sculpture. One of the unique characteristics of that is uh, instead of having a piece on a, on a plinth, uh, you're taking it off of that. And what a pedestal and plinth do essentially is it creates a, a boundary between the viewer and the sculpture. Other art sculptures displayed on the Riverwalk are unique in their own way, but none of them are as unique or creative as the Long Toss. It challenges your notions of what other kind of things do you see in your surroundings that have very simple, these kind of pure geometric shapes. That's something that a lot of uh, artists have done throughout time is to, you know, take everyday objects that we see and try to kind of simplify them down into their most pure geometric uh, essence of what their shape might be. Reporting for Canvas, I'm Nick Glab. We're Kerosene Circuit, Circuit from, from Dubuque, Dubuque, Iowa, and you're watching Canvas. We decided to get a band together, didn't know who we'd get, but we got all the people we had hoped to which would be these three, so, yeah, well, you know. Seems like nothing is as sweet as a secret you can see. Now I know the song is an abstract. It goes on and on and on just like a wheel With some difference you can feel when you put it on the road You may see it in rows, put it on the road You can put out a good record 
with uh, you know very little space and, and you know just uh, just some good minds all working together. You know. Luckily, we have people in this town to hook up with on that stuff. So in a town of like limited resources as we can be sometimes for musicians, we're able to you know release an EP independently, have people record us or. Everyone's been awesome about helping out with photographs or whatever, so it's, it's pretty kind of actually like communal, the yeah. art scene and the yeah. music scene. This EP, we have like a handful of, of new tunes, kind of uh, kind of cooking up, and um, right now it's just like tightening everything up and and, and trying to get this uh, this EP out to as many people as we possibly can. You go support live music in your town. There are a lot of good bands in town, so don't be afraid to pay a little bit of cover to go see them. That's how the bands get paid, and that's also how the venues make money. Also, <clears throat> you can check us out on Facebook, and you can download songs and see if you like them from our band on, um, on a site called Bandcamp. So kerosenecircuit.bandcamp.com. That's it for our show tonight. Before we let you go, we have a performance from the Mellows Maddox. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you.